Hi, my name is Hatem Akal, and today's presentation is about using SI Wave to do power integrity. There are many ways to do power integrity. We are going to present here one technique. You need to remember two things when doing power integrity. First, do not try to design all the power planes in your PCB simultaneously. Do them one by one. Second, do not use ideal capacitors. Use the models of the manufacturers. These models, they have non-zero ESL and ESR. Ideal capacitors have zero ESL and ESR, and that's not right. Let us start. So we have so many power planes. We're going to select the 1.2 volt. This board has already many, many decoupling caps from some old projects. We are not going to use them. We're going to add new ones based on a new specification. So I will disable them all. So we go to circuit element, we go to capacitors, we select them all and we deactivate them. So you should see no, that's how we deactivate all the capacitors. Let's start now our PI design. Step number one, find the equivalent circuit of the VRM or some call it the output impedance of the VRM. You will find them in the VRM data sheet. It's usually an inductance plus a resistor. For our case here, the VRM data sheet says that the value of the inductance is 1 nanohenry and the value of the resistance is around 10 milliohm. Step number two, verify if the VRM impedance meets the impedance specifications of the power play. To do that, we go to tools, capacitor inductors library browser. This is a very powerful tool in SI Wave, but not so many know about it or use it. First, add the VRM spec. This is the impedance of the VRM by itself. We add now the specifications of the power plane. And let's say from 0 0.01, from 1 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz, 100 megahertz, and the spec is 0 0.03, 30 milliohm. By the way, make sure not to put zero here. As we can see, the VRM by itself is badly violating the specifications. In this case, we need to add decoupling caps right at the output of the VRM, but which one to choose? We refer to this table that shows the active band of many famous standard caps. We choose the ones that falls within the band of interest below 100 meg. So you can see here, we can use the 10, 100, 1 micron, we don't want to use these ones because they are completely outside the band. We come here, you can select one supplier or two. In our case, we'll, for example, we select Morata. You can select any other supplier. Uh, we select the size of 0 0.0402 and you can specify the value. So in our case, we said 10 nano. And here you go. You have all the different possible capacitors that have exactly 10 nano. If we select the first one, now we see three curves, the original VRM impedance curve, the cap curve, and the new curve, which is what happens to the VRM when you add one capacitor, the band of interest of the cap, half of it falls outside the band of interest. So it's not recommended to do something like that. Usually we'd like to have a cap with a band totally inside the band of interest. So instead of using the one E minus eight, we're gonna move to the next one, 100 nano. Make sure to remove the one you selected by making shifting it to zero. Change the filter to 100 nano. And again, let's select this one. This is way much better. You can select something in between, but these are the standard kind of numbers, 10 nano, 100 nano. So instead of using just one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use more and maybe we're gonna use seven or eight let's say seven remember we don't want to optimize the vrm all what we want is to lower this curve to a reasonable level so we added this now we have a hump here so we go to the next one in the list and we go with one microfarad same thing now we would like to keep this one we don't want to delete it so we come to the filter we change to six see it falls right where we want it now let's see, for example, two, three. That's good enough. It looks flat here. The next one, 
is 10 microfarad to handle this hump here 1a minus 5 1a minus 5 sometimes this tool doesn't give you anything uh, try to extend your search and you will see certain values now you can sort them select the GRM and I think one is more than enough now we have a good response so we go and we document these ones these are our caps so we selected seven from the hundred we select three from the one microfarad and we select one that has um, uh, 10 micro now what we want to do is we want to add these ones at the output of the VRF uh, so we have small numbers here but suppose you have a lots of ones suppose you have like 20 here and 30 here you're not going to go and add them directly in the model so what we're going to do is we're going to add them together in parallel so 100 nano times 7 gives us 700 nano but for the ESL and ESR you have to divide by 7 same thing for 1000 becomes 3000 and this is the equivalent ESR equivalent ESL and this is um, just one of them great so now we go to the model we close this one we're done with this one and we go where the VRM is so this is where the VRM and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the impedance of the VRM this is very important from 1.2 volt to the ground and this is called let's call it the VRM and it's 1a minus 9 and the resistance is 1a minus 3 1a minus 2 and now we would like to add the capacitors so what is left now is to create one port at the CPU and uh, the way to do that is we go here we select PI analysis and we select our voltage and we assign a port we create a port right at the CPU 0.1 milliohm as we said before it's very important that you optimize one power plane at a time and if the power plane has so many components you notice here it has yes it's connected to the VRM but it's also connected to many other components you try to design them or optimize them one component at a time in this case we have in this case we are optimizing the connection to the CPU one and as you can see we are selecting a single port always solve the PI problem as a single port and I'm going to explain later on why it should be a single port so we configure we are ready to go we are ready to solve configure validate and we're going to select to be this one VRM with the DCAP plus the bare PCB you select the band I'm going to do it from 1 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz so now we have a solution we switch to Z parameter and this is the curve that represent the VRM plus the cap plus the PCB we add the limit line again so what we are looking at here is Z11 but Z11 is equal to the impedance that the CPU is seeing at its input that's why we keep it a single port because we can jump immediately and look at the result without having to do any post process now we can see that we are still violating the specifications so we need now to lower this down so what we do is we capture the values at 100 meg which is 0.267 and also the value at DC which is around 12.5 milliohm so we document these two we close this and we go back to our tool so the tool here doesn't have any cap just the VRM so what we want to do is we want to change the VRM in such a way that it match the other one so you start with the ESR 
and you make it equivalent to the number we got from the DC, which is 12.5 in minus three. And for the ESL, you keep changing it. Let me do this. Put a marker at 100 meg. So we want this value to go down to 0.267. So we have a value of 0.28 when I used a VRM of 4.4 in minus 10, which is 0.44 nanohenry. That's good enough. So this one, this curve, matches now the VRM plus the decoupling cap plus the PCB without the additional notches here. All what we care about is this curve. Now we add the limit line again, and this is the limit line. Now we want our dark line to go below this curve. If you remember, when we looked at the decoupling cap, we said we're going to start with the 20 because we want the bend of the cap to be completely inside the model. For the case of the CPU, it's the other way around. It's okay to start from a cap that's half in, half out for so many reasons. This looks much better. I'm going to put them in a table, derive the equivalent, and now we're going to add them to the model. And that's what I did here. PI, vault, configure, validate, and simulate. And we have a solution here. Let's plot the results. And bingo, we have a solution. Remember when you start doing PI, make sure on the VRM side, before you add the new ones, make sure to add the ones that the supplier is recommending. That's very important. Start by them first, then add more. The same thing for the CPU. In our case, we assume that there is nothing. Nothing has been recommended, so we started from scratch. But if there are caps recommended by the CPU supplier, then you need to start with them first, then you add more. Why is this important? Because the caps at the CPU side, they have another purpose. They're not there just to fix the impedance, their whole job is to provide enough amount of current to the CPU when, it's, when it needs it. Now that we finished designing 1.2 volt with the load of CPU, you can go back with the same setup. You can go back and instead of looking, studying the CPU one, you can change it and you can check the next component. This time, you're not going to verify the VRM alone. You're going to verify the whole thing together, which is the VRM plus the decap, plus the PCB, plus the caps that we put for the CPU. If you discover that this line doesn't meet the specifications of this component, then you add more at the input of this component. And you repeat the same thing for all these components one by one and you repeat the same thing for all the other power plates what is next after that is the trivial you add all these caps in the layout tool properly then you import the model again and solve it after all this work it's highly recommended to run the pi advisor the reason why is to be able to reduce the number of capacitors and to have a better configuration for your power plates Thanks for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed this approach.